Okay, so today we are we are going to be discussing about uh, chapter 13 of the book, which is just like a basic introduction uh, to, to Shiny. So the basic objective is that we are going to explain the principle, the basic principle that is involved in building a Shiny app. We are also going to understand how to build the, the user interface and the server parts of a Shiny app, because looking at the Shiny app, we only have just uh, two components. We have the UI, we also have the server. So we are also going to understand how we are going to share our app with others. So, so that is basically what uh, the chapter covers. So like uh, for, for the introduction part of the app, uh, we all know that uh, the Shiny is a web application where we can use uh, in sharing our insights in which we have gotten from our, from our analytical part to the key stakeholder because we can use it in communicating our results and Shani app are very Shani app is composed of what uh, just as I said in the intro part is composed of the two parts we have the the user interface uh, the user interface whereby the user can interact uh, they can interact uh, with the app and basically looking at the, the user interface, uh, it basically contain uh, codes. Like uh, normally we can even find HTML tags, we can find JavaScript all in the, in the user interface. But when we come down to the server part of the Shiny app, the server part of the Shiny app, that is where we put our actual R code. So we are going to write our actual R code in the server part and the, and Shiny is going to transform those code into what outputs, and those outputs is what the user is going to see as they are they are working uh, with the app. So basically, the main idea uh, of Shiny is that Shiny uses uh, the principle of what reactive programming, and reactive programming simply means that as the users they are interacting with the app, they are making changes to the app. We get instant and automatic uh, updates. At that instance, because the app gets automatically what updated because of the principle of reactivity. And I say that in this ways, elements in the app are updated whenever users modify some option. This permits a better exploration of the data and greatly facilitates communication with other researchers and stakeholders. So basically, when we are working uh, with Shiny, is that for us to really advance further in Shiny. There are some other tools in which we need to learn in order for us to work, customize uh, our Shiny app to make it more advanced. So we need to think about learning about HTML. We also need to think about learning the CSS, which is the Cascadia Sky Sheet, and also JavaScript. So if we are really expert in this area, then if we dive into Shiny, then we are going to be really, really uh, productive. I think that. That is what uh, they do explain uh, in this part of the, the book. So like, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the structure of a Shiny app, that the Shiny app is broken down into two parts. We have the user interface, which is the UI. We also have uh, the server part, uh, and the server part is, that is where uh, we write our actual output. So Shiny is going to what, translate this output and give us uh, the output. And in order for us uh, to run the app, we need to use the shiny, the, the shiny run app function. So when we use the shiny run app function, we just pass it the path to the other app.r, or we can have some. Oh. We can. I, I, I just the someone else at my door. I'm coming back. Okay. So we can just uh, pass the path to the app.r, but in some instances, uh, we can split our app having the UI separately, we also have the server part uh, of the app uh, separately. So in that case, we need to just use the app directory where we pass in the parts where we can find both the UI, the server part, and also the data in which are we are loading in the app. So basically we have the, uh, the library uh, Shiny, the library Shiny here is going to start initialize our Shiny app. Then we have the UI, which is a flute page, this flute page is just like the landing, the, the own page of the app. And in, within this flute page, we are going to uh, write uh, some other R code. Maybe we can have the, some other HTML tag like the title page. 
We can have the select inputs. We can also have date range inputs. So we can supply all those information uh, in the UI parts of the app. Then for the server part, they do explain, we have a function which has inputs and also outputs because the inputs is coming in from the UI parts of the Shiny app. Then the output is our actual our code in which we have rendered in the server. We need to display that in the UI because as the user is interacting with the app, uh, they, they need to see the results. So in order for us to start the app, as I said earlier, we need to use Shiny app, then UI, must be equals to the UI server is equals to server. But in, in, in some instance, we can choose to, to label this UI with another any name we use as a label for the UI and also the server, we need to call that here in order for us uh, to start the app. So, but there, there is one key thing in which I also observe in the, this part is that whatever label, Whatever ID we use for the in the UI, whatever ID we are using in the UI, we need to call that same ID in the server because we need to be able to link uh, what we are having in the the, the the server to the UI. If not, if not, if the IDs they are not of the same, they are maybe the the type of we have some uh, inconsistency when we run the app, we were we are not going to get any outputs in the. In, from the app, we are not going to get any output. So we need to be consistent. Whatever ID we are giving, we need to call that same ID in the server part in order for us to uh, get the output. So here I say library shiny, uh, run app, then we pass in uh, the directory to the, to, the, to the shiny app. I think uh, that, is, uh, that is basically what uh, this part is talking about. It's just the structure we have seen the structure of the shiny app that is broken down into two parts. We have in the UI, we also have the server. Then we use the shiny, uh, the run app function in order for us to, to initialize uh, the shiny app. So in this part, uh, we, we are going to be looking at uh, different inputs uh, in which uh, we have uh, in, the, in the shiny app. Though these are not all, the book just explained this, but I, I still believe there are still some other inputs uh, in which they did not cover in the book, like we have the buttons, which is the action button. Maybe the user, as they are working, interacting with the app, they can just click uh, the action button, like the submit button. Once they submit, uh, the, the, their inputs get submitted uh, automatically. We also have single checkbox. So this one, the user can just select anything like the action button, let me just take for instance, like the book club, the book club application, which we, they use in scheduling the book club as we are selecting our inputs, those maybe specific time slots in which you want to use uh, for the, to participate in the book club. At the end of the day, we just click on the submit button. Then our, our information in which we are selecting, in which the user we are selected, we, it will get, it will get, it will be submitted automatically. And I think John, John the Geek is going to get our own inputs so that once, once he wants to arrange the time slot, he will say, okay, this is the, the, uh, the time that will favor for the book club to run. So that is basically what this act, uh, submit button, which is an action button is doing. We also have the single checkbox for just checkbox. We, have, we also have checkbox group. Maybe we can have group of checkbox in which the user can just click on anything. The date input, this one is for dates. Uh, the date range, for the date range, we need to have like the start date and also the, the end date. Then we also have the, the file input. Like for the file input, the user can just upload any file into the app. It can be a CS, if it is a, depending on the code, if you have a CSV file, they can upload. If you see an XLS file, they can also, like, upload it into the app, then they use it in the uh, uh, analytical part. We also have the help text. This one is for the user to, to just type in anything into the checkbox. We also have numeric inputs. This one, as the users, they can select any number. There is always a default number in which they we are, but the user can, are free to make changes to those number. But once you select any other number, based on the, the principle of uh, reactivity, 
and we are going to have instant and what automatic take what update from the app. So we also have checkbox, uh, select box. So this select box is just like a drop down. It's going to come in like a drop down. We can have different type of choices in which uh, the users they are going to make selection. They can just select one, and we. We also have the radio button. The radio button is for us to just click on any, it's just similar to the checkbox group. We can just click on anything. Uh, we have the text inputs. The text inputs, uh, the users need to enter a specific text. So once they input those texts, uh, uh, the app, uh, the, it, will, it will get rendered uh, in the server part. We need to use the render text uh, function in order for Shiny to render that text. Then these are the slider. We just click on anything and we can just slide it. I think that is all for the inputs. I don't know if there are any comments or contribution before we go into the next part. No, I can just add quickly, like I will share like a, a small script that I have stored somewhere. Okay, On let me chat, that, that okay. just in the chat, like you can check it. It's I also like this as well. Like I'm, I'm, when I do a shiny app, I think this came from mastering shiny. Uh, from uh, Wicam and Singjet Wicam. And it's just like, uh, if you add that, this is just a small R script that you copy out, you add it like uh, in some R file. And in uh, Studio, you can use it as a background job. And when you yes. run it, it changes automatically like the option with Shiny Auto Reload. Yes, and yes, then, yes. Uh, it runs what you have said, like just in the previous style, like you just run the run app function. So you still need to, um, and then it will automatically like load the shiny app, and you can automatically reload it. So when you are changing something into your script, it's a, it's just a, a cool stuff that uh, uh, you can use, but no big deal. Like so, it's perfectly clear. I will think it. Okay, that is okay. That means is to run it as a background job. Yeah. So okay. it run, it runs the shiny app as a background job, so you can work on your stuff, and it automatically run it as a background job. So you see it uh, as a uh, updating on real time or crack or, or, or did it to debug it. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, this basically is like uh, the output parts of the Shiny app. Just as I said, the output parts, this one is related to the server parts uh, of the Shiny app because in the server parts, all our, that is where we put all our output. Okay, like in the in the UI part, we are we all we, we have our the, our output ID. So what, but once we come down to the server part, we need to say output dollar sign. Then we call that output ID that we have referenced in the UI part. So like example, if it is a plot, so we know that we are going to use a render plot uh, function. Okay, we are going to use a render plot function in order. For, uh, then we now pass in the actual R code in which we want to use in rendering that plot. But when passing that arco, we need to reference the, the ID, the actual ID, such that we, we can be able to what, connect the server parts of our, that is the outputs, we need to connect it back to the UI, such that as the users, they are interacting with the app, if they make any changes into the app, in the UI parts, we get instant and automatic word updates in the server parts which is the idea behind uh, the reactive uh, programming in our box. In this part, we have, we have the histogram. We will see the actual code in the example part. And we have the, the table, which is uh, the render data table, which is the DT package. That's in the make use of the DT package and the render uh, data table uh, function in order for them to get uh, this table. I think in the example part, uh, we'll see that. Here we have text outputs, which creates what text, which creates text. Then when we come to the server, we need to render that text in order for us to uh, get the outputs uh, uh, in our in our in our shiny app. Then when we have a table output, we know that it's going to be either render table. When we use render table, the table we are rendering is going to be a static table. But when we use the render data table. We know that the table is going to be interactive. The user can click on anything. They can filter for some specific uh, observation in the app. Then we, if you have our image outputs, 
I think it's going to be the render image. So we, we are going to render it in order for us to see it pop up in, in the Shiny app. I think they also explain for, uh, further details in this guide because the, there's a link uh, to the guide here. Further, uh, further details were being explained at this using this uh, guide. Okay, so the inputs, the outputs, and also the reactivity because the general idea of Shiny is about the, this uh, reactive, you need to really understand reactivity in order for you to understand uh, Shiny. Uh, you have the float page, which is like the home page. We have the inputs, uh, the uh, inputs, which is like the select inputs because we need the user to select a specific input. Then the, in this example, we have the input ID, which is my inputs. Then the label, which is my label, we, we can have some, additional information in which they did not call here yeah, they just use the dot 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 a symbol means that we have some other additional information in which we can still pass uh, to that function then we have uh, the outputs which is the output id my output id so wh whatever name we call this output id we need to make sure that we reference this in the several parts of the code so that we can tie the two the two the ui and the server together so that there will be a connection between the both. So in the server part, we have a function input, which is taking the inputs from the UI. We also have the output, which is the output we are getting from the server part. We have output dollar sign, my output, because we need to tie this back, uh, back to the server. Then we have a render. If it is a plot, it's going to be render plot. If it is a table, it's going to be either render table or render data table. If it's going to be the, the image, it's going to be render image. Then here they do explain the code to build the outputs. We need to pass in the code here, yeah. the yeah. code in which we work. Just to be clear, like the, the star you put is because like we use the, before it will be like as a uh, plot part, just like to say like it's a generic output uh, function, but uh, the dollar is just because, I don't know, the, the, the star just to make, um, uh, just uh, because like uh, the function will have another name, uh, but yeah, this is just the general idea. Yes, 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 yes. yes. The star, the star but, means that they are... Just wanted okay. to precise it. Thank you. Then yeah, it's, if it uses input value, we can use, then we can use this syntax in order for us to make any reference here. We can say input, dollar sign, my input. So if we use a specific input value, then the output will be rebuilt whenever the input value changes. So maybe as the users, they are interacting with the app, if they select some specific value from, that is different from the default value of the app, we get instant and automatic word updates at that moment. So Shiny will automatically tally detect, yes, that we have gotten changes in the app, it will update immediately and we are going to get our final results uh, at that instance uh, from the app. I think that is uh, basically everything for the input, output, and what the activity. So, uh, ju just a quick note before, like we have when you use a renders uh, function, render uh, usually like uh, you use like to have the curly bracket also inside of it to mention that it's reactive. I think yes, so. yes, yes, yes. This this is because it is yeah. reactive. So yeah. is there anything that happen, it pick it. Thanks. So like for the examples of the Shiny apps, here we have an library Shiny, which is going to load the Shiny package. Then in the UI, we are using the flute page. Then here we have numeric inputs. That is the input in which uh, the user is going to be select. The default value input ID is going to be, we are using N as the input ID. Then the label that will be shown in the Shiny app is going to be sample size. Then the default value in which we are selecting from the app is 25. Then the output, plot output, the output ID is what is. So when we come down to the server parts of the app, we have a function of input, output. We can also have a session in some, in the Mastering Shiny book. I think they also specify session can be there where different people can interact. Uh, then we have output, dollar sign, hist, because this is the plot outputs ID, we need to call that output ID in the, in the server parts of the code. 
Then here, since it is reactive, we are using the render plot function. Then within, we have a curly brace, we have a curly brace here. Then this is the actual R code in which we are going to use to, to generate our histogram from, which is, we are going to generate a random number, the rnum function, which is going to generate 25 random uh, number because we are using rnum input dollar sign M because our input ID is this. So we are calling that input ID here such that as the user, uh, as the user is interacting, uh, then for us to start the shiny app, we, we are called this function. The UI is equals to UI, the server is equals to server, and the default value we selected from the app, it was uh, 25. Such that if the user should come into this app and select another value, in that case, maybe they select 10, we get another, it, the app is going to update, it's going to generate 10 random number, then it's going to, plot the distribution using uh, the histogram. So because of, it's going to give us instance updates at that moment based on the principle of, uh, of the active programming. Yeah, ju just one uh, uh, quick remark that here, it's very, uh, I didn't do it, but I sure like it's a good, like but adding a basic value will uh, make ensure like we plot something. If you, I think if you do not add value, it will probably like display you some error because you do not have like a, a n value, and then the histogram yes. will not be able to plot. So that's why like um, doing like uh, setting up a, a default value is a good practice. Yes, yes, yes. Because the default value that is what is going to be selected when yeah. you run the app. Then, as the user is now interacting with the app, they can select any other value outside, but you can't go above the default value. If yeah. the default value is 25, you cannot say you want to select 26 or 27. Oh, you can, I think. You cannot think. exceed. You can oh. you can only go from that value of 25 down. Oh, okay. You can go yeah. above. So that is okay. okay. So this is basically about uh, the HTML contents in Shiny App. So the HTML contents are. Uh, uh, we have our level one header, which is H1. We can use this tag, which is the first level header, which is just similar to like we are writing our normal R markdown, where we just use one pound sign, which we know that is going to be level one header. Then we have the H2 here is for the second level header. Then for strong, this is a strong, which is what is going to be bold text. The text is going to be bold. Then for us to italicize, then this is the syntax for italicized text. Then we can have a link, link to web page. So this is how, this is how they, they do specify it. The link to web page, the images, uh, the line break, and also horizontal line. So, but this one in this part, I'm not really an expert because I've not really experimented in depth uh, on this part. So I don't know if anybody have more contribution to. Yeah, I, I use the uh, I use the beer sometimes, uh, the beer one like to, to, to do a line break. But a lot of time I just write the, HT, um, the HTML codes. Like uh, in the book, uh, you know, when the, we use leaflets, uh, it was used a lot like uh, either like the break line or the um, stronger. If you remember, like when we were designing a leaflet, but yeah, it's it's a, basically like I think it's called the HTML package that implement this method uh, uh, into R. But you yeah, know, it, it's good. Thanks. I think no yes. need like to to add more. Like this is a good introduction enough. Okay, I think they also specify some other customization that we can find uh, in the in the in the URL way in of the book. In which they link us uh, to. Okay, layouts. The layouts of the shiny app. This one, the layout has to do with the how the, the look of the app because we need we need to understand because normally for shiny before we think of building our shiny app, we need to first have a mental model. We need to have drafted our mental model. What is the type of app we want to to develop? We need to have 
draw a plan. Okay, this is how the app is going to look like. This is what I expect my app to, to do. So once we have gotten that, before we even start writing the actual code that is going to give us uh, the results. So here also we go to the UI parts. We have the flute page, which is like the, the, home page, the, the, the flute page is going to ensure that as the user is working with the app, any adjustment is going to, like is going to fit the size of the screen, which is a flute page. Then we have the title panel. Here we can put uh, the title. Maybe we can just give it a, any title that we want. Then we have the sidebar layout. Then we have the sidebar panel. Sidebar panel, which is going to place everything at the side. Main, then the main panel, we give it the, the title as the main panel. So if we execute this, it's going to work. This is just the basic, uh, like uh, the, the basic UI, uh, the basic uh, UI the basic uh, UI parts uh, of the, the basic UI parts uh, of the code. Then if we now go, if we now go over here, we are still having another example here. Define use the user interface object with the appearance of the app. Here we have the UI, which is the flute page. The title panel is example of sidebar uh, layout. We have the sidebar layout, sidebar panel. Then here we are using the numeric inputs because we need the user to select specific inputs. Then the input ID, we just give it N. Then label is sample size. This is what is going to show in, at the top of the app. Then the default value we are selecting 25. Then main panel, then we have the plot output then output ID is going to be histogram for the output ID. Then when we go down to the server part of that code, in the server part of the code, we need to, then we need to ensure that there is a connection between the UI and the server part. So we have server, which is a function of inputs and outputs. Then we have output dollar sign hist, because we have the plots, Output ID is what hist, so we need to connect that to the server. Then we have to use the render uh, render plot function. Then we have our curly brace within this inside this curly brace. We put our plot function there. So within that, we are we are calling input dollar sign n because if you look at our input input ID, we need to refer we need to call this function in the server part because the default value in which we have selected is 25. So we call that here is going to, this rnum function is going to generate 25 random numbers. So once we render, when we start the app with the shiny uh, uh, run app function, uh, I think I made a mistake. I was supposed to put a val equals to false because I cannot run the app Why? The app is supposed to be run. It requires a server for me to run the shiny app. So I'm going to, before pushing it back to GitHub, I'll just put evaluation equals uh, to false. That is why we have this error message uh, here. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's because like you are put it into an error markdown document and it's going to yeah. it into the, the, that's fine. So, when we run that, so this is the, the first the first example. This is the output we are going to get. Then the second one, this is the output we are going to get. And the default value we are selecting is what 25. So once the user make any changes to this value, they select any other change, then we have instance and automatic updates uh, in the plot. The plot will give us instant and, and automatic uh, updates. Okay, I think that is that. Good job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for the last part uh, of the book is about uh, sharing the app. I think they do give us two example. The first example is by you sharing the actual R code with the person in which you, with your clients, in which uh, you are you are you are you are building the shiny app for you can share the R code with them. But in order for this to work. They need to have installed R on their machine, and they need to have installed the Shiny package and other any other uh, dependency. Everything need to be set up. 
in order for them to be able to run uh, the app. And the second approach in which uh, the book they do explain is that by way of hosting this app using the shinyapp.io, which is like a server, okay? But this server, I think uh, there is, a, the, you need to, they have, we have a minimum of five app in which we can host in the shinyapp.io. We have a minimum of five app in which we can host in shinyapp.io. Maximum, maximum. Yes, maximum of five app. Then if you want to go anything further uh, than that, then you need to pay, you need to pay a certain fee amount of money for you to host your app there. And each app in which we are host, there is, I think, one gigabyte. The maximum, the size should not go beyond a one gigabyte. So once your app get bigger, then you need to pay money in order for them to host this app. I think everything can be gotten uh, from the shiny app.io. This is the link. This is to the shiny uh, server. And this is their shiny hosting and deployment website. So yeah. I think that is basically uh, what uh, I was able to understand from uh, this the chapter. Yeah, I, I have deployed a shiny app uh, into my own uh, 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 into my own uh, servers. I mean, not servers, but like uh, remote uh, computers, and it's uh, fairly easy. Like the hard part is always the um, I mean. The hard part is mostly uh, setting up your web servers to allow people to get access to it. Like I use Apache too, but also currently, like I think uh, people use uh, Nginx uh, to do it. But yeah, you have like a lot of guide on the internet about how to do it. Uh, and it's fairly easy and well documented. Uh, I mean, it's like all I'm saying fairly easy. Like if you understand Chinese web servers, if you understand what is a web server, uh, Shiny is basically like a, a web server. So, uh, and it's it's well documented by the people from uh, Posit, no, I guess, or as no as uh, R Studio, and it's uh, easy to do. Like if you um, if you want to check, yeah, like the... I think I was yes, I was even playing with one today. There was a a Shiny app. I was I was I'm still trying to build today. I think I deployed one today, but I'm still testing it. Uh, I don't do it because uh, we will see like your, your, <laughs> your sharing. Yeah. Like, uh, we do not see your, your cuts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, thanks for doing it. it. I think it's good. Like you can play with these shiny apps that I owe. If you want to test something, it's a good way of testing, uh, you know, your app. If you do not have like, um, but yeah, uh, I do not remember, like, but there is very good post on the internet uh, how you can also test your own uh, on your web servers. I do not remember the link now, but I will maybe post if I found it later. Okay. So yeah, it, it was good. Like, thanks for the... Also, like, you have very... Uh, I do not want... Uh, there's probably a book club of Mastering Shiny, no? Yes, I have participated in the book club, but I will still join maybe later on if they do announce a new course, I will join them. So we can, I, I do not, let me see if I can find the link. Uh, maybe it's here. So I can, I mean, well, you can find the link on the Slack. Oh, it's here. I uh, will, I will find it. Uh, no, I think I participated in the last course. That is, I think that is called four or five, I think, yeah. Yeah, I don't find it here, but it, it exists somewhere, okay. Is it the so, link to the book club? Yeah, I do not find it, but yeah, yeah, you have a... Yes, I have, have a, yes, I have participated in, in one yeah, of the channels. If you can post it in the chat, so it will appear if people want to see it. Okay, let's... But is that's it fine if you do not know, but just to make it like, you know, because the video will go on YouTube and uh, maybe with the link of the stuff we share, so people Let's... will find it easily. But it, it's easy to find it on the on the Slack of uh, Air Force Data Science. Just let, me, let me post it. Oh, let me, perfect. Let me post the book. This is the book, Mastering Shiny. Copy the link. Uh, I think that is it. It's on the chat. Perfect. I do not know how to. Yeah. 
no, I can just copy. Okay, well, perfect. Um, well, that was good for me. Like I understand. I mean, I uh, I know a bit, but it's still it's still good to see like another another perspective on it. Uh, uh, but we can like do you have something to to add or? Well, not, we can, we can yeah. free us. Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 great. So I'm going to add few, a few other things next week. Uh, <laughs> So okay, thanks thank everyone for me for this nice presentation and uh well see you next week and all on the book club. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.